Welcome to Snakes and Otters, a pointless discussion of eternal questions. Get ready. We're about to live in your head rent-free. Eh, what's up, Otterites? This is episode 140. I'm Martin. And I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. All right. Well so. done, Robert. Well done. Thank yes, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So, if you can't guess from that, we're talking about Looney Tunes. Merry Melodies. Merry Melodies. Tunes, Bugs Bunny. And... All the great and wonderful cartoons that made up the core of our cartoon experience growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturday you know, mornings. They yes, yeah, Saturday morning cartoons were primarily Bugs Bunny and Looney Tunes. Uh, you know, at least in, in uh, where I grew up in Michigan, it was often you know an hour and a half to two hours, depending on. Oh yeah, because uh, they were cheap. To pay for, and everybody could get the rights to them, and you could combine them because they're shorts, right? Into a thirty-minute or sixty-minute, uh, and shove plenty of commercials in. Yeah. So they're yeah. money making. And there's plenty of variety. There's a huge number of them. You know, you never right. ran out exactly. in a decent uh, time frame. And who, you know, when you're kids, who cares if they show the same one every every couple of weeks? Well, you know, if it's one of the good ones, you look yeah. for those. But there are much more. I mean, they did tons and tons of uh, of Bugs Bunny, but they did tons of other ones too. Right, Bugs Bunny was not even the first. No, he was actually a later. Now he kind of became dominant eventually, but yes, uh, Porky Pig was really the star early on. Well, actually, he's not even the first. No, not at all. He's just because when it first started, uh, they had uh, uh, it's called the. Uh, uh, the Harmon and Icing era, which I had not really uh, heard of those two, but when I saw pictures of the characters, uh, so there was a character called, uh, oddly enough, Bosco. Uh, Bosco, the uh, uh, Inkling Kid, I think, uh, was one of the first uh, shorts that he was in. Mm -hmm. And uh, when there was a dispute with Leon Schlesinger, who was the one who ran the studio, yeah. uh, the creators were able to take the character because apparently they did not they did the smart thing unlike Simon and Schuster. Yeah. They kept the rights. Right. Yeah, there and it gets a lot of it comes down to that. Yes. Yeah. And so they took it with them. And so then they created a new character uh, called Buddy. And you know Buddy was just a similar looking kind of guy. Now this is the era when the cartoons were still black and white. Yeah. So if you saw pictures you'd realize and uh, you know they were popular enough and they were a direct response to uh, Mickey Mouse and the uh, stuff that Disney was doing. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is, Warner Brothers did this not just because uh, they wanted a response to uh, what Disney was doing. They also did it to showcase the music library that they owned. Yeah, That was one of the primary reasons. Yeah, so, Otterites, if you're not familiar, of course, cartoons did not start out on television. No. The cartoons started out in movie theaters. The studios, instead of showing commercials and previews previews would warm up the audience with shorts most of the most of them animated so every studio had its own animation crew and characters uh, these of course Merry Melodies and Looney Tunes were Warner Brothers one of the big big studios yep um, I think it was MGM theirs was Tom and Jerry right I believe you're correct uh, yeah. Well, yeah, there are others. Woody Woodpecker was a few other, and you, you yeah. had different ones. Hanna Barbera and animation as a house type thing. Really, un until until Snow White and Seven Dwarfs, when Disney said we can do a feature, never been done before as a feature. Right, right, right. And it that was, that was a different. Shorts before, but that was a different track. Yeah, it, right. that was that was also very labor intensive. They could only do them every few years. Yeah. it's all hand drawn. Right, you had where, to hand paint every cell. Whereas a short, you can churn those out pretty quickly. Especially right. as they became more in demand and popular, you have by the by the fifties, you know, they're they're constant. They're right. right. Now. And then they were shown before films all the way through into the fifties, um, and so they were not just kid films because they really weren't kid films. Right. There were films you could take kids to; they might be interested in you know, yeah. like cowboy films and things like that. Yeah. But they were shown before any film. Before any. So feature, adults right, were the yeah. primary. Yeah. Uh, viewers of these early shorts, and so as you, the, they were these warm ups to show two and three of these shorts before the feature film. But when television came along, yeah, that's what was the then the it was like, hey, we got something easy we could fill up Saturday morning with and do cereal and toy ads in between, mm -hmm. right? As opposed to now, cartoons which are the ads themselves. Yes, the ads for the toys, right, and then the toy ads. And then the cartoon again was all just an ad for the toy. Yeah, but toys weren't 
branded much back in those days. They changed year right. to year. I mean, uh, it's it's like Saturday morning. You know, you rarely had a in the sixties and seventies. You rarely had a TV uh, Saturday morning series that lasted more than one year, one season. Right, like right. They usually they, churned them through one season, <coughs> maybe two at most. Uh, well, and seasons were longer back then. Yeah. I mean, they, they had enough to actually do a fair amount of yeah. but, uh, like, syndicated. Right, Hong but Kong Fui was one season, and I think even the Fantastic Four cartoon yeah. was only Well, all the Marvel stuff season. was just one season, which is a shame. And uh, Star Trek was really the, the it was one of the few oddballs that did last like three two, or two. Yeah, it was two seasons, the animated series. And it's... But things were starting to change then. Yeah. By the time you get to the 80s, then you syndicate animated shows like... Yeah, once you get to the 80s, Transformers, things like that. Yeah, G.I. Joe and... It was Sh- selling he- toys. That's it's right. Strictly the selling The change toys. had happened. But these are from a different right. era. So these are these are different era. And for Gen X... They're like funny cartoons. Yeah, but, but this is what we watched on Saturday morning. We were finally done with school for the week. And we would watch these. And this is how we learned about... We would about get up early... Yep, get up Cause, early. Because there's no cost to creating these. That's why... The cost they, is sunk, yeah. It's, it's already done. sunk. So that's why every year they would always have these year after year after year. There'd always be a version of yeah. them. And eventually in the 70s, the Bugs Bunnies would actually do a few that they would in, intersperse in that were new. New ones, if you, yeah. If you looked at a few of them, yeah. there's a few that they did during that time. But most of them were all reruns of the others. But, this and, but some is, of the uh, really early ones. Yeah. I'm talking about, you know, the 20s and 30s. Well, most mostly the 30s, I suppose. Well, uh, yeah, they because Mickey Mouse wasn't until 28. Yeah, so... 29 talking, would have been the first right. of Bosco. And, so you're talking about in the 30s uh, and, up to the, and up through the 40s. During the war right. years and, and stuff like that. A, yeah, it was a big deal during the war. Those they, they older the cartoons were sold to syndication, too, to local markets. We would get Bugs Bunny and Pals for an hour here on Channel 41. You remember that? Yeah. Back in the 70s. Uh, which was, but it was, none like, of the, it was none of the 50s. And that those, those later cartoons, those were at a different price point. But the older ones... That were n- most of the time not the name characters. It's the very early Bugs Bunny, very early uh, Porky Pig or Daffy Duck. It was the last time you could see the wartime cartoons. That's correct. Yeah. And most of those were with they're just animation. They're they're they have uh, my green fedora has no characters in it. There's tons and tons and tons of stuff in that Warner Brothers library. Yeah. That you know there's no there's no brand with that. So heck yeah, we'll sell that and. Uh, the the Bugs Bunny and the Daffy Duck and the Porky Pig were those early iterations that didn't really look like the iconic characters later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a brand differentiation. So yeah. they would sell that locally. Right. Whereas on Saturday morning you get Bugs Bunny and Friends, which was the Warner Brothers produced stuff for the national level for the networks. The yeah. networks. Uh, which was and, all the really good stuff. Yeah, and this is the way Gen X learned about opera and classical music. Mm-hmm. Yes, Watts and, Opera Doc is still my favorite Bugs Bunny. It is. It's so awesome. Yeah. Well, though Chuck Jones is still considered to be one of the master animators. Yeah, of all and time. and that's that's really when when people think about these, I think they're really thinking the Chuck Jones era. That's right. Yes. Which was a little bit later, but see, by then Bugs Bunny was fully formed. And he was, and he was the star. And he was the star. That's yeah. there's there, very little else. After what that. we think of as Daffy, and and Bugs and and Elmer Fudd, that's that's Chuck Jones. They're they're the dominant force. By that time, Porky Pig has waned, uh, and there's there's a, kind of yeah. a sidekick. He was the first big star in 1935. Yeah, exactly. That's the interesting thing. It took them several years to get over losing their first star, this Bosco uh, character. Because the buddy thing never really worked out. Yep. So it took several years um, for them to come up with something that really worked. Um, so And Porky Pig was... And really Porky Pig had to be yeah. the first one. Yeah. And, you know, which is fine because, you know, Tex Avery, Chuck Jones, Fritz Freeling, these guys were masters. They were. They, very, uh, they, they were masters not just at the craft of, of doing these shorts, but, you know, as we always talk about, especially this is true for Chuck Jones... There's multiple levels of stuff going on. Yeah, yes. There's stuff yeah. for the kids and stuff for the adults. That's right, and that's a mastery when it comes to animated features, short or long. Yeah. You better be able to do that because mom and dad aren't going to take little Junior to see this if they can't be entertained too. Well, but that's just it, though. 
they didn't take the kids to see these. That's correct. They, they were shorts. They were written for different movies. reasons. Yeah. You're right, but that, that um, was morphed into that later. Yeah, but but still, I mean, there were there were no uh, features for mm-hmm. Bugs Bunny until way later. That, yeah, that was yeah. a that was way later, funny. like seventies, eighties kind of yeah. thing. And yet, even so, they did these on multiple levels. That's one of the things that is such genius about. There's it. there's a lot of the roots of this. It goes all the way back into the stand up comedy. Uh, the Poconos and the summer camp and, you know, where you would go for vacation if you worked in the city. Right. In New York. And, and so the, the, what they called the Borscht Belt, you know, these com- comedians. So, I mean, a lot of this was tied into, you know, comedy stuff and, and, and working out, like you said, working on so many levels. Well, uh, and Miss, so uh, was, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel kind of talks a lot about that Borscht Belt type stuff because yeah. they, they do that, that, that the upper middle class, uh, upper class Jewish folks would do these summer retreats, and they did a whole season with, with mm-hmm. her out there. Yeah, and yeah. That's where all this comedy came yeah. from. Uh, and they're they're they're. Uh, that's, they're you know, I this. mean, nobody puts baby in a corner. That's that same storyline. That right. what was the name of that movie? Dirty yeah. Dancing. Dirty, Dirty Dancing. dancing. That's, yeah. that's, you know, that's the that Jewish same... family that goes out for the summer vacation now, and how you interacted with the people who worked at these camps and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, you know, the uh, because these are uh, cartoons, which obviously, you know, the cartoons were recognized as something that were uh, you know, a kid sort of thing. Or, or maybe that's not the best way to put it, more universal entertainment, yeah. so that they would appeal to anybody who was watching. Yeah. Uh, but they were still done uh, in a very sophisticated way. Yes. And that's one of the things that I think is so great. You know, Foghorn Leghorn is probably one of the best examples of this. Uh when you when you really examine all of these things, what they are is satire. There's yes. very much satire to this. Yes. Foghorn yes. Leghorn is the epitome of that because he is based on an actual politician that spoke exactly like Foghorn Leghorn. As a matter of fact, I was listening to the cl- uh, radio classic station on uh, Sirius XM th- uh, a couple of days ago, mm-hmm. and I didn't catch the name of the show because it wasn't on the display. Uh, which is a shame because I'd love to look it up. That character, somebody was actually satirizing that senator again, and I was listening to it. I was like, "Oh my God, this really is Bob Hart Hart. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that was one of the things that made that so funny was he really did talk like yeah. that. All of the, you know, all the aphorisms. You know, I keep pitching him, and you keep, keep missing him. Yeah, stuff like that. That's right. And you people, close it. you're so low. Exactly. So yeah, that's just fantastic stuff. And there's just it's just what's opera doc is a satire of, of Wagnerian opera. Yeah, you know, uh, you take out all these archetypes and these characters from mythology and say, oh no, it's going to be a rabbit, a cross-dressing rabbit, right? So it's it really was a lot of genius, and that's why that stuff endures. And again, Chuck Jones, Robert McKimson, Chris Freeland, yes, McKimson, yeah, you know, uh, I think. I think McKimson did most of the uh, Foghorns. That could be. Uh, it's been a while since I've looked at the credits on any of these. And I think yeah. Frizz Freeling did a lot of the Speedy Gonzales. Uh, that's true. Uh, you can't find those anymore. We'll get to a lot of that in a minute, though. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of, the, like, almost all of the wartime stuff uh, will never be seen again. Because yeah. it is, in, by, especially by today's standards, <laughs> uh, isn't, it, it is considered incredibly racist. By the standards of the day, it would have been seen as satire and um, legitimate propaganda. Well, correct. I mean, one of my favorites, and this is one that's that you can see because it's not particularly offensive racially, is Hair versus Hair, H E R R, with Herman Goering. Right, but you still can't find it. Yeah, it's it's I mean, hard. It's harder to get to. Of course, yeah. most of the time is unless you lived through it or are historians like us, you don't get the jokes. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. That's uh, and that's why it's not as it's not as funny. Uh, and that's it's, it's well, just, there was a, quite a few shorts made during the war about going after the Japanese. Well, that Bugs was, Bunny nips the nips. Yeah. That is blat- oh, that is unbelievably racist, and yeah. that is not as bad as some of them were. <laughs> Most of the, other than a couple of Bugs Bunnies, uh, Mississippi Hare and Southern Fried Rabbit, which you, you are very racist. Most of Bugs Bunny stuff weren't, but some of the stuff before that in the '30s was really, really bad. Yeah. And uh, they, uh, uh, 
they released a lot of these uh, on DVD back in the you know the twenty aughts uh, called the Golden Collections. Multiple varieties, and it wasn't just the names. I mean, the, these are talking you're talking about six DVDs. One of which will be Bugs Bunny. One will be Daffy Duck, and mm-hmm. others will be just others. Uh, uh, Speeding the Zox was not included. They they considered that whole, that whole character to be racist, so those are gone. You can't you can't get those, uh, even though they were part of the staple uh, during the rotation because they were later. They time. were they were produced later, and then and they, they were they, so they, they were had they had a quality of animation to them that were pretty heavy. Uh, all those problematic ones, Whoopi Goldberg came on and introduced the series, and she was an ideal choice for this. She's saying, yes, we know some of these are problematic, but for film, for classic film animation preservation purposes, we've kept, you know, these here are here. We recognize you to, we ask you to recognize that these were a product of their times, this is not an endorsement of those ideals or beliefs. She did a really good job. I don't have the script, of course, but yeah. she was very good about explaining that. Otherwise, these will just be gone forever. And that would, I mean, and as as animation goes, they are brilliant. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and yes, they are problematic. And uh, and many of them, yeah, you, you can't find them. I mean, you could probably find a YouTube. Uh, it, it's not, yeah. it, you, know, you can't legally you know, so get them. So Warner's... But, Warner's- I think tries to get most of them pulled from YouTube. They're Correct. really hard to find on YouTube. That's yeah. right. All yeah. the cart- all the yeah. Warner yeah. cartoons. Are. So, uh, speaking of those, uh, in '68 is is actually when Warner started to do some of this stuff. So this is actually you know just two years after we were born. Yeah. Well, three for you. Um, and they're called the censored eleven episodes of Looney Tunes and Merry Melodies. Yeah, that's the big ones. Yeah. Yeah. And those were the ones that were moved from um, syndication or broadcast distribution. And it's because they, what they, they were, did for African Americans, Native Americans, and East Asians, you know, for World War II, um, the, especially, especially that one for the uh, yeah. J- Japanese, yeah. Yeah, Tokyo, Jokyo, uh, uh, Bugs Bunny, Nips the Nips, which you mentioned. Yeah, that's uh, mm-hmm. Of course, uh, well, even the way some of the white Southerners were depicted. Oh uh, yeah, was you know, so I mean, it's anything. Yeah, the, 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 yeah, the racial insensitivity. It was not in every one of them. Many of them never had that, but there were enough of them that did that. The entire corpus has really fallen out of favor much now. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, just, so, it's, it's classic now. That's, how they, that's why they released them as they did. There are 11, and I'm looking for the list of the 11. Yeah, and uh, the, some of those were... Oh, just Hitting the Trail for Hallelujah Land is a black and white. Yeah. Oh, these actually have some clips. Because you can hit play. Jungle Jitters. Yeah, that's a bad uh, All This and Rabbit Stew. Uh, that is the the stereotypical for the time uh, black character with the really big uh, lips, lips. and all that. What I would now call Kardashian lips. Uh, no, that's... You know, about that. Yeah, that... It, it was, oh, it was unbelievably offensive looking at it from today's mm-hmm. uh, uh, aspects. Yeah. Um, the Hardship of Miles Standish, Slightly Daffy, A Feather in His Hair, Nothing but the tooth, Tom 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 Cat, horsehair, and engine trouble. Uh, actually, and, engine trouble was made in 1969, so uh, they didn't, weren't all removed at the same time. Right. And so there were, there were a few that were pretty, and some were heavily edited. Some as were heavily well. edited. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's so right. Fun. I mean, well, we would see the unedited version in the 70s, the one uh, Southern Fried Rabbit, uh, where Bugs Bunny goes down and fights. Yosemite Sam as a Confederate. Yeah, uh, you saw a lot of that, and it's pretty, it's pretty wicked at times. But it was still around. Right, that's one that would have been heavily edited. That's right. It, exactly. It was eventually heavily edited before yeah, so it finally pulled all together. Confederate Honey, which is a parody of Gone with the Wind, was heavily edited. So you know the the Mammy character, yeah, yeah. would have been taken out. Uh, so uh, in Fresh Air had one which uh, there's a blackface Bugs and Elmer. Who sing Camp Town Races together? Mm, yeah, See, yeah that is strictly verboten. Yeah, uh, it's, it's some of these things are out there, but most of these do not have that in there. No, I, no, I, I they think don't. It's, I think we again, it's, it's important that they we recognize were, that. Th- yeah, we want to bring them up just to show that you know, one, not everything was perfect, but you know, it's part of the historical record, and it was no different than anything else uh, uh, being done at the time. That's correct. Right, you know, that's, they were products of the time. And we've again, come a long way, baby, and I love that fact about the modern. You know, people. A lot of folks want to go back to that, the good old days, the way they were, etc. And you hear about that. I ain't got a lot of patience for that anymore, boys. Maybe as I get older, I just don't. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's just oh, that type of stuff is pretty. I missed this. Yeah. So about ten years ago, 
uh, at New York Comic Con in 2010, Warner Brothers confirmed that it would be re-releasing the Censored Eleven completely uncut on DVD through the Warner Archives program sometime in 2011. Uh, it would be a general traditional release, retail release, mm-hmm. uh, but I'm looking to see if they actually did it. Yeah, that's uh, the one. See, that's... No, delayed indefinitely due to, due to declining sales of the previous Looney Tunes Platinum Collection and releases. You're right. That's very true. Those... But TCM released... did a retrospective. Uh, around mm-hmm. the same time in 2010. Yeah. Uh, so, and they showed them and, all. And they, some, uh, again, with them not being on YouTube, they are out there a little bit on the internet. The, the, some, you can watch uh, a few of them. Now, I want to change the subject and let's talk about some of the best ones, the funny ones. Oh, yes. was, yeah, we had to get to that point. Yeah, I was we, expecting we, that. We leave the troublesome ones behind. We, we, we've done our due diligence and our duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. spoken about So, that. Uh, I, I particularly like this trilogy, uh, the Duck, Rabbit, Duck, Rabbit, Fire, and Rabbit Seasoning, uh, all from the 50s, uh, 51, 52, and 53. Yes. These are the famous ones. Duck where season. What season. season. That's Duck right. season. Yeah. Everybody knows yeah. it's baseball season, my boy. That's right. Yes. Uh, do you have a fricassee and rabbit license? Yeah. You know, that's all a, those great jokes. We can, we can do lots of those. those yeah. uh, and I just, I just love the whole, I'm a fiddler crab, why don't you shoot me? I'm a fiddler crab, crab season. season. Uh, it's the one where, where Daffy's bill gets shot around his face all kinds of different yeah, ways. So, yeah. It's one of my all-time favorites. And, so. and, of course, my other uh, favorite that sits above all others is uh, My Bunny Lies Over the Sea. Oh, yes. Because yeah. oh, it's, it's Scottish. Scottish and, That's right. Uh, and I still love the whole bit at the end about uh, you know cheating. And, uh, well, that exact... Uh, that exact situation occurred in the New Hebrides Open. You know, Frantis versus Ginfritter. Uh, Fuddle plays Cadeffle. Uh, you know, that whole bit. And, and just cheating indeed. You know, and, and Angus is, well, the weight of evidence is clearly against me. Yeah. <laughs> it's not one of the more popular ones, though. It's uh, it, But it's, it's just a, so good. Yeah. No, it, the, the, don't don't so, you get tired of running them 18 bases? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the whole call, you know, just... Bugs took on Scotland and golf and and just the whole. Oh, nothing was sacred. Uh, yeah, that that was a a big part of, again the taking on Wagner and opera, taking on well, the yeah, Barber of Seville. Uh, oh, oh, the the Barber of Seville. Yes, Rabbit of Seville. Yes, Rabbit of Seville is Rabbit also of Seville. that one. And what's opera are two of my all time favorites. A third uh, dealing with that kind of thing is, and I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one where Bugs is trying to sleep. And the virtuoso was practicing. Long-haired hair. Long-haired That's hair. Yes. Giovanni Jones. Yes. yes. See, you stole one. That was one I'm going to be mine. Uh, yes. What do they do in Mississippi one. when skies are drippy? You know, we remember yes. that. Leopold. 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 Yeah. Leopold. Yes. That's right. Uh, who was based on a real person, by the way? You know, uh, yes. Uh, it was a. It was a, a big, big. Uh, one, that was a one of the very, very best. So that, uh, and. Oh gosh, there's so many really good ones. Uh, the time when Bugs plays against the Gas House Gorillas in baseball. Yes, I was going to mention that. It's yes. one of the early ones. That's yes, right. Yes, it's, yes, uh, it's how many pitches and strikes out uh, all three batters on one pitch. That's right. Because it's so slow. <laughs> exactly. One, two, three, you're out. One, two, three, you're out. Long-haired hair goes back to 49. Yeah, and see, that's a Chuck <coughs> Jones. It's one of the earlier Chuck Jones, if I remember right. So, you know, you're talking about some really, really good uh, animation at a very early time. But, you know... Oh, pardon me. That's been a long day. Um, there are so many. It's it's really difficult to pick out some of the, the best. Uh, yeah, I love the... There are a couple where they did this, where um, Bugs is an animator torturing Daffy. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, the, uh, and I think there's another one where somebody is torturing... Bugs. I That's think. right. It was a sequel Elmer, to the... Elmer gets yes, back Elmer. at Bugs, yeah, Elmer gets to Bugs and Bugs is doing it to Daffy. Um, yeah, I don't remember the names, but those were ones that I always looked forward to seeing as a kid. Yes. And, uh, you know... I have good a, stuff. Cl- I, good, clean fun for the most part. I mean, that, that's one of the well, best that's things right. about well, it. Well, uh, the three witch hazels are some of my very favorites. Oh, yes. That's correct. Uh, they, she was only in three, uh, and she uh, and, and the first one was really the best, Bewitched Bunny, uh, especially when, uh, although it's not shown a lot much now, because in the end, she feeds her a... Uh, 
she creates a, a poison for him and he feeds it back to her and she turns into this voluptuous beautiful woman that the genie follows out and he says but aren't they all a little bit uh actually that's the wrong one but that's aren't they all a little bit uh wicked inside or something like that uh speaking of women in general which you know that you don't see that one <laughs> anymore uh uh, but some of those are very, very... Hillbilly big. hair, yes, that's one. This is another uh, one of my favorites, Hillbilly hair with the square dance. Ra- oh, whirl, yes. Whirl, whirl, twist and twirl, jump all around like a fly and squirrel. No, don't you cuss and don't you swear. Just come right out and form a square. Which, uh, actually, if I remember right, Fritz Freeling, or no, Robert McKimson, was a square dance person. He, he, oh. he was big into that at the time, and that's one of the reasons he put that into there, is that he had learned... From that, uh, some of my other favorites of the ones in particular uh, is the one where uh, Nighty Night Bugs, where he gets hit on the head like you know the Connecticut Yankee, goes back in time and has to go back out after the Singing Sword. Yes, uh, and, and uh, that's where you that's where you learned about uh, you know sirloin of beef and cirrhosis of the liver. Where we're not going. Well, okay, call for the court jester. Yeah, you know so many great uh, foils for for bugs. You've got Elmer, obviously Daffy. You've got Yosemite Sam. Uh, those are the, the big ones. But you know, he also took on anybody and everything. Uh, you yep. know, these, like in Hillbilly Hair, those are characters you've never seen before. Duck Amuck, by the way, is the one you're Duck. talking yes. about. That's the one yes. you're looking for. Uh, 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 what's Opera Doc, of course, is, is a hugely amazing one. I love Operation Rabbit. With Wild E. Coyote, super genius. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have, yes. I have cut e. those lines out as wave files and used them all over the place. Because yes. uh, they're, they're, they're those very, are very good. Those are a little bit later, genius. too. Those are, I think, are It wrong. is. Uh, yeah, some of the Duck Dodgers in the 24th and a half century. Oh, yes. I was going to say, how can we forget and that? The Martian, one? yes. I love and, the Mar- Martian. Mar- Martian. That's very, very yes. true. Yeah, he's the Iridium Pew 36 explosive space modulator. Uh, that's the uh, modulator. That's the right. That creature has stolen the space modulator. Yes. Bunker Hill Bunny. A bunk- uh, oh, yeah. yes. Oh, that was a oh, great one. I'm a Hessian without no aggression. That's right. Well, yes. Rob, uh, you know, Ra- Robin, uh, Robert. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Rabbit Hood, uh, Rabbit where Hood. he, uh, where you have Errol Flynn jumping in at the very end from yes. 1939. You know, welcome yes. to Sherwood. You know, it's, it, uh, it was just totally uh, an amazingly great moment. And this is all just the Bugs Bunnies, for the most yeah. part. And we yeah, mentioned yeah. a few of the Daffy Ducks. Daffy had some of his own, like the Duck Dodgers. Uh, it plays a big role in what is it, Alibaba Bunny? Is that the one? That's the one where they both go in because he comes into him, uh, and they end up inside the uh, the treasure cave of, yeah. of Alibaba. Yeah, I may be a coward, but I'm a greedy little, little coward. coward. That's, that's yes. where that's where that one. That's came where it comes from. Mine, yeah. mine. Uh, uh, a bully for bugs when he fights the bull, you know. Dum, oh dum, yeah. Dum, 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 oh. Dum, smack smack. You know, it's a fantastic. Uh, which is actually a remake of one that they had made. Uh, Back in the in the forties, uh, where he fights another bull. If you see the the different versions of it, it's just I yeah. guess you decided to to make them all. Uh, you know, when you do it once for good reason, uh, it's really really good. Uh, we haven't talked about Pepe Le Pew. Uh, not one of my favorites, but he was very very uh, yeah. It kind of got old Pew. after a while. A uh, a, yeah. Once in a while, it was fine. Uh, uh, the, what the ones I liked the most were the ones, uh, especially the one where the uh, the cat uh, got her own smell. They did kind of a, uh, you know, the not the gift of the magi. What's the one where the, uh, the husband and the wife and they, they, they he sells off the pocket watch the to get her a story. Home. Yes, that's, no, that is that's gift of the magi. That's that's this O Henry story. That's correct. That's where it comes no from. gift of the magi. Yeah, okay, yeah. Now I'm thinking of something else. Yes. Yeah. So so the gift of the magi. So, uh, you know. I forgot which one I was talking about now. Got me off. Ah, anyway. Sorry, sorry. Yes. But you, you were talking about ones other than bugs, of course. Oh, yes. So the, the, female, the female cat. And the cat. Yeah. She got a smell so that she could uh, stand to be with Pepe Le Pew. But Pepe Le Pew got rid of his. That's right, yeah. So that he could be with her. And so then she was doing to him what he was doing to her. And he was trying to get away. Yeah. Uh, that, I, was, I, yeah that, that was a nice t- turnaround there. It was very funny. Uh, um, but you're right. You know, of course, that's another one of those sets that you can't really put on TV today. Uh, that's sexual aggression, which technically, yes, it is. Yes, uh, you know. It's, so what you're saying is that Pepe Le Pew was a cartoon Jeffrey Epstein. Uh, 
Well, we don't no. know how old she was. Or maybe, maybe no, 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 there you go. Maybe, maybe Harvey Weinstein. Then. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, yeah, and that, that, that's very true. Uh, that's you don't get a lot of that. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, glamorize the Lothario. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, but the girl got away most of the she time. She did. Yes. That was the great thing about it. Like, yes, he's. Well, often she was interested he, at first. Yeah. But and then she realizes who he is. Well, it's not who he is so much as how he smells. Well, yeah, what he is, yeah, that he's. And a, you know, she couldn't handle that. I mean, there was one where she tried the. It was probably the one where she, where she got a smell uh, by by using Limburger cheese. That's right. She used that. Uh, she, you know, she tried the clothespin to uh, uh, to close off her nose so she couldn't smell them. All these different things. Uh, some of the peppies were good. They were fun. But you see, that's the thing. All of these things that are. Uh, Problematic outside the ones that the the really bad eleven that uh, that they got rid of, right? Uh, things like the Speedy Gonzalez and the Pepe Le Pew. I don't think those of us who who watched them took them to be anything other than good fun. You know, yes, it was... none of like Speedy Gonzalez did not make me think all Mexicans are lazy, not which no. is what the dichotomy was because that was the thing about Speedy Gonzalez. He was really fast, but everybody, all the other Mexican mice were slow and very, you know, lazy, wanting to take siestas all the time, things like that. But that didn't make me think that was true. We and were just did, kids. We didn't get the stereotype. We didn't know right. any of that. And we, you know, if we had met somebody from Mexico, we wouldn't have thought that they were just like that. And watching Pepe Le Pew didn't make us think that it was okay to go out and just sexually assault women. And... That's why. So, that's why I have a problem sometimes with the premise, with the with the idea of yeah. getting rid of some of these things because, you know, my God, are you such a dumbass that that you think that this tells people this stuff is okay? I mean, I can understand it more if you put it in live action stuff. Yes, the cartoons, no. Uh, you know, to me, it's it's not anywhere near the same level of. Of uh, believability, um, but you're so yeah. There's there's foghorn leghorn with the dog. Oh, and the chicken hawk and the chicken hawk. Henry, Love the chicken Henry, hawk. Henry Henry Hawk and the and the chicken hawks. What is the one? This is another favorite. I can never remember the name. Where uh, Bugs and Elmer switch places. Oh yeah, because. Uh, uh, I'm Elma J. Fudd. Me there. I own a mansion in the yacht. yacht. That's right. Yes. Oh, I may be a squee yeah. wabbit, but I'm not going to Alcatraz. Yes. It yes. Was, that, that was a, I want to say that was a, I don't know if it was, I think it was Fritz Freeling that did that one. Uh, that was great. Yeah, it was, uh, I wish I could, I can't quite give you that one off the top of my head. Uh, uh, if you, you you keep zipping through the thing right there, uh, the the one there were two of them actually where they fought the monster, the big red monster yes. with the tennis shoes. Yes. There was the early yes. one where the um, where the uh, monster was hair racing hair was the one um, from the earlier one. No, the hair brain hypnotist was the early one. There were two versions with the that's uh, correct with the monster. Uh, uh, there was one where Peter Laurie Peter Laurie that's where was, was the going. basis. Yeah, and then there's one where Vincent Price does. Uh, that is correct. The, the Vincent Price is probably better. The, the later one was better. Yeah, probably. But I don't know. There's something really nice about yeah. You know, Peter, give him Peter Laurie some love. That's, well, I understand. You know, you monsters are just such interesting people. You must leave such interesting lives. Which, of course, us of the times recognize that is a playoff on Madge from the. Palmolive commercials that went through the 60s and 70s. Yeah, oh you know, yeah. People see that now, and that means nothing to them. Yeah. So there's all well, sorts of Well, what they're more up. likely to think is that that is uh, something against the stereotypes of gay men. Well, that's correct, which it had nothing, which to, do had with nothing that. to do with that. That's right. Well, that's, you know, projection much? Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the, the dog, Sam, uh, well, no, the dog wasn't Sam, um, the 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 wily coyote when he when there was a coyote character that uh, uh, they were on shift. Uh, uh, the that's right. And, yeah, the dog was. Uh, and I don't, you're right. I don't remember the name. The sheep dog versus coyote. You know, yeah. Morning Sam, Morning Joe. And they clocked in and clocked, clocked, clocked out. out. Yeah. Okay. Those were those were great too. Loved yeah. It. Loved well, it. the whole the whole Roadrunner and Coyote thing, it became iconic in many ways because they recognized that this whole Acme trying to do this crazier and crazier stuff. Well, it's such a part of the culture that in that Armageddon film we talked about in an earlier, epi- uh, earlier episode, 
uh, there's ac- actually a line where, so basically we're going to do this uh, Roadrunner thing uh, where, uh, where Wile E. Coyote shoots this big rocket and we're going to try and uh, hit this asteroid. And Billy Bob kind of looks at him and says, yeah, but you know, we have better rockets than Wile E. Coyote. <laughs> hey, you know, you, you can't argue with that. Uh, Tasmanian Devil. Oh, yes, Tasmanian Devil. Love Tasmanian yeah. Devil. Yep. Um, it's interesting the number of times that uh, there is uh, male-female shenanigans going on, uh, as well as the number of times there's cross-dressing going oh, on. Oh, Bugs does this all the time. Yes, yeah, well, he's Bugs, not the only one. He's but... not the only one, right. but yeah, he, he does it quite a bit. Uh, which I'm not entirely sure whether that's allowed anymore, yeah. uh, but, you know, because honestly, I don't know what the real rules are anymore. I don't know. Uh, of course, there's two or three shorts uh, depicting Bugs as a wrestler. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those were, those were good. Oh, uh, against the Crusher, yeah, that was, yeah, that was the, the second one. Yeah, that was really, really good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the Looney Tunes, is, like, like we said, it's not just Bugs. It's really, it really is a lot of these different characters. Uh, yes, uh, but uh, they kind of took back Sylvester and Tweety. Yeah, they they, they they kept their own uh, their own thing going for a long, long time. Yeah. They were bankable folks. Yeah, well, you know, Sylvester and Tweety didn't really uh, have any crossover, except Sylvester had a few uh, shorts with Porky Pig as Porky's cat. Yes, yes. Uh, so, like, when Porky is staying in the Haunted Mansion I was wondering about that, yeah. yeah, yeah it was yeah. one of my favorites. Very uh, much so, yeah. He, uh, uh, he yeah. Hits, hits him on the head. Sylvester is the only one that can see this stuff. Right. And, and he hits him on the head at the end, and he gets stuck in a never-ending loop of singing Home on the Range as Sylvester carries him out. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was It was a... I can still hear that one. And the deer and the antelope. And the deer and the antelope. That's... <laughs> Uh, it's amazing some of these that uh, that we have through here, yeah. Southern Fried Rabbit. Yeah, Southern Fried Rabbit is one that you, that we've talked about through here. So, uh, uh, Bully for Bugs. That's the one. That's the second one uh, that he was he uh, against the. Uh, there are even some uh, uh, the fairly generic ones with some of the characters. So, like I remember one where Sylvester inherits a million dollars, and so. He and all of his cat friends think that they're going to live it up and party. Yeah. And so, but the financial, the lawyer who, you know, uh, is there and he's trying to uh, explain to him, no, you want to invest your money. And he puts them all down in front of a movie. He runs a movie for him, basically, showing him how the economy works (laughs) in a capitalist society about how investment works and creates jobs and all these other things. And so finally... While they're all watching the movie, Sylvester gets the money because it's all a big bag of cash, of course. Yeah. yeah. And then his friends who have watched this, they beat the crap out of him for wanting to take the money out of the economy, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it was just it's just such an oddball thing. Yeah. And I want to yeah. say it might have I think it might have been Elmer that was the, the, the guy who was showing the movie. So it was the regular characters doing non regular things yeah, for them. That's so great. Uh, but yeah, it was all fantastic stuff. Because the creativity, the never-ending scenarios. Now, I'm sure a lot of these things were satire of things we have no concept of because we weren't part of the right the yeah. cr- culture. The only you know, I didn't know the thing about the senator being the uh, uh, the source for Foghorn Leghorn until years later. Yeah, yeah. See, that guy was gone and, by the time. And we so were much of these ones that were made in the '50s are very much in tune with the whole space race. That's correct. And Cold yeah. War and, and, you know, all of that stuff and, and the the emergence of the information society mm-hmm. uh, and the technological uh, boon after the war uh, tied right into bugs. Right. Yeah. The, 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 there was a great, huge shift in public attitudes, as you might expect, from the early 40s during the war. By the end of the time, you know, you're fully into the Chuck Jones era and things are very, very different right then. And, and you have things like Sputnik uh, that, that's, that's referenced. And Sp- Bugs goes to outer space. Martin Martian is a creation. And this is the 50s. This is when, right. when, when you're there, that, that sort of thing. Uh, and yet, for whatever reason, they always managed to entertain. Oh, yeah. yeah. There, I can't think of one that I would ever have turned off when it came on. Well, it's one of those things that when you saw it, you kind of had to follow it to the end. Yeah, yeah. Even even some of the some of the non uh, branded ones. Uh, uh, Green Fedora is one that I can never uh, re- never forget, and it's they, they the little a little rabbit sings the song, 
and it's really just kind of a cool little a little ditty. It's a very famous one. It's one you can you can find that one out there fairly easily. Uh, and yet there's you know there's some of those uh, really great animation stuff, uh, and it's not Disney. It was it was meant as a competition against Disney. Yeah. Uh, and it's it, it still keep, holds the test of time. Well, let's take a bourbon break, and then I want to get the exact line that I, I massacred uh, from my bunny lies over the sea. I have to get it right, or the, Mrs. Martin will never forgive me. Uh, uh, but bourbon break here at the 40-minute mark. That's about right. That's time. Yes. Uh, a little bit of that. Uh, what, what happy, oh, I love that. Just splash into my... Glass, oh, that's, that's, that's all I need right here. That's, uh, that's right, just a little bit there. And I still have a splash. I'm good. Yeah. So it's all basil hay. It's all basil hay right now. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's still one of the most reliable. Yeah, here at Studio F, kicking back. Yeah, exactly. In, in the comfort of, of uh, Johnny's John, game. Yeah, room. Johnny Storm's game room. That's yes. Right. Next door is the negative zone, negative zone portal. That's exactly Down right. the hall from Reed's lab. Uh, you got it. That's exactly right. Yeah. Basil Hayden is always reliable, always good. You can never go wrong with that. Again, it's my personal favorite. And it's not just because I'm related to the man. Uh, that doesn't hurt. That doesn't hurt. No, no. Well, it's how we, how you, you know, would have uh, known about it, really. Uh, sure. I mean, I knew that. I knew we the, started. I knew the name because that was right around the time I started getting into genealogy. That name tweaked me, thinking, "Wait a minute, I know that name," and then I realized, "Wait a minute, he's a he's a distiller. They're naming this after him," and that, you know, and here we are. You know, thirty years later. So, um, while I'm thinking about it, because I just saw it on, on screen, you know, one of the things that um, is interesting, even though they were off of regular television by the early '80s, mid '80s, whenever that was, yeah, uh, there were still later on some Warner Brothers uh, themed animation, you know, Animaniacs. Although Animaniacs, Animaniacs was very good. Uh, yeah, I was saying it was phenomenal. Uh, yeah, they were very much the same style. And I want to say that uh, some of the regular characters, like Bugs, made a, uh, an appearance here or there. But, yes, I believe so. Uh, then, of course, there was the uh, 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 Babs and Buster Bunny uh, thing. Right. No relation. Because uh, that was, whenever they would introduce yeah. the Babs and Buster Bunny, no relation. Uh, well, they had Looney Tunes Jr., where I think it was. Or yeah, and I think where the Babs and, and Buster Bunny yeah. came from. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and there was yeah there was a thing where uh, it was the big thing to do the baby versions like the Muppet Babies yes and uh, stuff like yeah, that there, there's some of that that was going uh, on there so you know and of course the movies you know Space Jam and Space then the more Jam. recent version mm -hmm. uh, they are all uh, which is interesting because you know the, the they change things with the times so the female rabbit in the original uh, Space Jam uh, is much more voluptuous looking. Uh, than in the later version that was done, uh, you know, they say they have basically desexualized her. Uh, no, know. yeah, that's um, that we expected anything else. You know? Well, yeah, I, you know, if it's something that's meant for kids, it's really appropriate to have a large amount of cleavage. Is a good good Precisely. question to ask. Absolutely, that's a very good question yeah. to ask. Yeah. Uh, so uh, now, if, if you're it, it, mainly for adults, that's a different question. <laughs> uh, but that, that leads into a completely different territory that we're not venturing into. No, today. not, not right. on this episode. There's plenty of Although, stuff. Bugs ventured into that sort of territory every once in a while. Uh, he did, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and they would they'd come up with all sorts of different, you know, the Sylvester and Tweety mysteries. I mean, they would try to rebrand these characters for in new ways uh, from here and there, but they never really recaptured the popularity that they had. And honestly, I think it's because there's no toys and no games related to them. So well, they're a harder sell. They used to have those, but the market was quickly crowded out because they're just not as sexy or whatever as well, the Well, I mean, stuff. what kind of toys can you have? I mean, you're basically going to get stuffed animals out of them. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, all, that's all, I mean, all it was. I have a stuffed Marvin. Yeah, I mean, so. yeah. I mean they're, that, and that, at, at that point, they're novelties, not real toys. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, uh, exactly. that's a good way to that's yeah. very well put, sir. It's very different from in the action toy segment. Or, exactly. Or even like My Little Pony type segment. Again, the whole thing is basically a commercial for the toy, and there's just, you, the line's completely blurred. You don't, there's, there is no difference. Right. You, right. You don't get something on TV for kids that is not tied to merchandise somehow. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why you will probably never see these. 
I mean, even the Cartoon Network doesn't always have some kind of Looney Tunes or Merry Melodies uh, show going on. Uh, they used to. I remember they used to. But they, they did. Well, even then, it wasn't very prominent all the time. Uh, Boomerang, right? Boomerang. You can get a lot of that. Uh, and Cartoon Network, and this was probably back in the nineties or maybe two thousands. They would do what they called June Bugs, and they would yes. show every every single in order. Bugs Bunny short with the removal, of course, of those, you know, the ones the, that were... Eleven. The, 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 the eleven, of course. The, of not course, all others of, that were edited, I'm sure. Uh, some. Most of them actually made well, it through. Well, no, I mean, there are some that were edited for future syndications. So, right, absolutely. You know, like the one that is the parody of Gone with the Wind. You're not going to get the full version of that. Right, yeah. I don't uh, think that was Bugs Bunny, though. Yeah, it was. Uh, I, I have to... I have maybe that's so. what the wiki said. Yeah, I, I don't... I, maybe that's... I, Maybe can't imagine. Well, it's been so long since I've seen that. Right. I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, well, you, very, you had played. undertaken years ago, yep. and I still have the discs, a compilation of all the Bugs Bunny. Which came from the June Bugs that uh, from, the TNT from So, uh, I, I, I let Did you get see. all of them? Yeah. Because, I mean, you even found the, the 11, though, didn't you? Uh, that w- uh, or I, most of them, anyway. No, there was, there was like those 11. You, I, would, I would get a placeholder and I'd put it in there. But no. I thought it, you got some of those. A couple of them, yes, you could find. Uh, and I and I did. Okay. Uh, but there was I think there were a couple that that did that I didn't have or uh, see. I only want them on there for the completion of the collection. Yeah. Yes, you're a completist just like I am. That's yeah. You well, I mean the that's thing. the whole thing. If you're going to collect something, by God, get all of whatever you are collecting. Well, that's correct. You that's know? right. Otherwise, what's the point? <laughs> well, and again, it's what we've talked about so many times in the past. You you don't want to destroy the history necessarily. It doesn't mean you have to put it out there for. Uh, popular consumption is entertainment and something that is good. Which is yeah, a very different but, thing than making it available for the collector. Yeah. Uh, and and, and you know, for the historian. And say, yeah, this this happened. This is part of the history. You know, we shouldn't, if you'll pardon the phrase, whitewash our history. You know, otherwise, we, to, we tend to make the same mistakes. Or it just well, it's just form. dishonest. That's, well, that's and that's exactly the thing. Right. It's not that I want to say that I want to keep the these things that are that are being taken away yeah. uh, because I'm proud of them but because we need to remember them to show that one uh, we can be worse than we are and two that we have gotten better than we were exactly I think that is very much and a it should be a reminder point. to keep getting better I agree completely and it requires a little setup and a little explanation but hey bring it on yeah, yeah. and you know some of the things that, that um, I'm sure Whoopi's available I'm sure uh, and if not we always are well, that's, that's correct. Right. That's right. We're cheaper than Whoopi. That's for darn sure. Exactly. Even when there's three of us. Yeah. Uh, three for the price of one. I'm loving it. So, like I said, so I wouldn't necessarily want to put those 11 back in syndication. Uh, but they should be included in collections. Yeah, in exactly. Yeah. And with disclaimers. You can do that all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, good Lord. They put trigger warnings on everything now. Yeah, why not? I mean, and stuff that I'm, I, I have, I've seen trigger warnings and then watched it. And I'm like, I couldn't find the trigger. <laughs> what was problematic about this? Yeah. And maybe that says I'm an idiot, but, you know, I try I would, and look for those things I with the eyes so. of today. Yeah. And I still have a hard time finding that stuff. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, Not you, always, because, you know, I understand the ones that are. You had a quotation, Martin, that you wanted to... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, again, this, uh, I mangled it earlier. It's the It's the... Great piece at the end of My Bunny Lies Over the Sea after Angus accuses Bugs of cheating at golf. And he says, cheating? Well, that identical situation occurred in the New Hebrides Open. Cadeffle plays versus Fuddle in 19-odd-18. And what about Freddis versus Ginfritter? Ha! Bisbo voices Stoigan in the Casablanca Amateur. Cheating indeed. The nerve. Noive. The noive. noive. That's right. Of course, I do this to Mrs. Martin all the time. And in fact... Wilson the Wonder Doodle, we gave him his middle name as Ginfritter. Oh, nice. <laughs> so he's Wilson Ginfritter. Oh, well, there you go. You have. So I have to. Here, I thought the was his middle name. Yeah. So yeah. Wilson the Wonder Doodle or Wilson Ginfritter. Uh, oh, so I had to do this one and get it right. Yeah. And, you know, there were a lot of uh, bits that were quotable in the day. There really were. You know, a lot of it was things like, uh, you know, Wabbit season, duck season, rabbit season, duck season, all that kind of thing. But, yeah. uh, you know. Leopold. Leopold. Yeah, we, yes. we can do that one all day. That's right. Uh, so, yeah, I love these. And again, to every Gen Xer, the, these things 
you know, the 70s were filled with this every Saturday morning. We loved them. Except during the Watergate hearings, which I'm still bitter about all these years later. Oh, very, very much so. Oh, yeah. man, it just, it just kills us. Yes. Uh, so. Sometimes I kill myself. Because, you know, I don't know where, where it was here, but in Detroit, uh, these were shown on the CBS affiliate. You know, it wasn't shown on the independent station. This is on network television. Oh, yes. That's why what I was watching got preempted. Most of the time, I think it was on the same... Well, Channel 41... Because the network was the one getting the rights, I think. For the later so, ones, but the real early ones, Channel 41 would have. Yeah, but uh, but but the Bugs Bunny and Friends or the Merry Melody... Yeah, TV, that's, I think it was... CBS, that's a national CBS, program. It was, it was rebranded yeah. locally as Bugs Bunny and Pals... Yeah, and they would, and, and it was the forty one folks had the rights to the early ones, and they chop them together themselves. Yeah, uh, and it was it was a three o'clock staple uh, for for many years because yeah. uh, you know it was cheap. It probably cost them next to nothing, uh, and, and it, a good lead in for Presto the Clown. Oh, uh, I remember me some Presto true, the Clown it came after Presto. Presto was at three o'clock. Oh, or, uh, okay. Presto was Presto was three because we couldn't always watch that one. Uh, when which was a local guy uh, that was done here, and in, in, in our age, that, I was in the. Third, I remember Presto. Yeah, third, fourth grade, and it was it was a it was a kids variety yeah. show. Then it would show some of the Hanna Barbera cartoons and a few other things like that. It was it was really, it was really cool. And that was when they would pick up a lot of the recent reruns. That's when you would get your sixty six Spider Mans. You get Lost in Space. Yeah, you would get um, the Marvel superheroes. The Marvel superheroes. You get some of those. You would get. Uh, uh, Battle of the Planets. Love oh, yes. Battle of the Planets. Love yes. that one. That was uh, Voice of Bottom of Sea would make appearances in there. Uh, there, there were several. Uh, Batman. Oh, of course. And which Ultraman. Is Ultraman. Oh yeah. Which they didn't show that one often. They showed it, I think, only two or three times. But I happened to catch it. I was in the fourth grade, and it was amazing. That was a staple on Channel Twenty. Yeah. It was yeah. amazing. amazing. And it's amazing. most of it's that first season of Ultraman that they did. And they would just show it over and over again, and we—I was just enthralled. I was a fourth yeah. grader. It was—it was the. Story. It was awesome. It, it was, was. Everybody yeah. loved Ultraman, yeah. and everybody yeah. loved you know, Battle of the Planets. Oh, this, I wanted a, a jacket that said Science Patrol on it. Well, Come yeah. On. I mean, who didn't want the the you know the guns and all that the guns stuff? Especially, yeah. yes, oh, that's right. Yeah. That um, orange jacket with that black bar across it. Yeah. 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 That was, yeah. That was pretty wanted, slick. Wanted to be Hayawata, you know. <laughs> so anyway, you know, one of the things interesting, we're talking about all of the Looney Tunes stuff. But this truly was the golden age of animation mm-hmm. because it wasn't yeah. just the Looney Tunes stuff. Yeah. You know, the Woody Woodpecker stuff was out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, uh, Tom and Jerry. Tom and Pink Jerry. Pink Panther. Pink Panther. Well, that's more 60s. It, it came a little later, yeah, but it came a little later. But yes, of that. Th- that came at the tail end of, of this. But yeah. You know, but it was Robert McKimson. It's some of the same creators. Yeah. Uh, or, and, no, no, Fritz Friedland. Fritz Friedland. Yeah. Yeah. Barbera had a huge studio that was full of this sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. Puss and all the rest yeah. of them. Yeah, and Snagglepuss. Yes. Yes. Which were never really as brandable as some of the other stuff was. But, man, they really had... Well, some... they missed... All of those, though, missed the... Uh, let's show them as shorts before movies. You're right. They were made... Yeah, Woody Woodpecker didn't. Right. Uh, but things like the Hanna Barbera, the Snagglepuss, the, yeah, that the, was the, all that was toward, toward television. television. But they had a, a but Tom and Jerry were shorts for movies. Yes. yes, pretty good life after the yes. fact, though, and you were able to combine those because they were cheap. Yeah, uh, and a lot of uh, in things like fractured fairy tales and um, oh, yeah. underdog, underdog. Those were uh, those were the same. Rocky studio, and Bullwinkle, Rocky and Bullwinkle, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Tennessee Sherman, Sherman, Sherman. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. They yeah. had a very, you know, or Mr. Peabody and his boy Sherman. That's, that's right. And so there's a lot of animation that's going tuxedo. on here that's syndicated or finds its way to syndication after the fact. Uh, most of that early Saturday morning stuff, it's short lived. But some of these, like we've talked about here, they go on for yeah. a while. They would mutate them a little bit. The, the Hanna Barbera stuff would be on, and then they would combine the shows into what was it? The race, the, the wacky races, the wacky yeah, races. Yeah, which ones, exactly, and that's, the hot you know, rides. Uh, right, and that's that's Hanna Barbera. And this didn't even count Scooby Doo and everything. That's too. right. The planet with all those other things like that, Dastardly and Muttley, and then of course you got the Sid and Marty Croft. Stuff which is kind of totally puppet different. Stuff. It's puppetry, but it's 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 still that Saturday, puppet stuff. Yeah, puppet. Make it sing, make it dance. And the sea monsters. Excellent show. Yes, Sigmund. Love sea Sigmund monsters, and the sea monsters. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I I remember HR Puffin stuff. I was very small, but it was it was quite the. Yeah, deal. I saw all of this stuff. Uh, you know, I may Absolutely. have seen some of it 
first run, but you know, uh, the vast majority of it would have been in, in reruns. The seventies had some really good Saturday morning fair. In, yes, in many in many cases. Well, again, it was before the total commercialization of Saturday morning right. cartoons. So they're and you know it's they're a being straight creative. Line yeah, from uh, Looney Tunes, Merry Melodies, because the you know when Disney started making movies, the shorts for them weren't as important. So you know. It really is. I mean, it starts, yes, with Steamboat Willie, but really, uh, Looney Tunes, Warner Brothers, they take over the, the whole shorts yeah. mindset. But it is a straight line from them all the way up basically until uh, the end of the 70s. And all of those things that we just talked about. Yeah. Without Mary Bellies, Looney Tunes, none of that stuff happens. That's right. No, none yeah. of it. They realize there's a market there. Planet of the Apes is really kind of the first one that's really super tied in. To merchandise. Uh, it was, but it was really... It, it ended up being that. But in the start there, it was more like, well, these movies are big. Let's go ahead and make a more serious Saturday morning cartoon for some of our older kids, uh, which that series was. But there was a precedent with that Star Trek had had the same thing, which is very adult. You know, it's very yeah. watchable as an adult. And very right, and there were a ton of Star Trek toys. Exactly. You know, so I mean, there was... Don't, don't get me wrong. There was commercialization. Yeah, uh, but they weren't things. all commercial. You know? Right, well, and the commercials, the toys, were a benefit, not the point. Oh, yeah, and you had, you know, different shows, uh, Land of the Lost, yes. which uh, which was mm-hmm. still still considered a really great, uh, a great standard of a mix, uh, which was actually opposite Valley of the Dinosaurs the same season. I never saw any of those Valley of the Dinosaurs, traditional animation. We watched because you can't watch more than one, and you can't save it for later. No, nope. we we were land of the lost folks, and some other folks mm-hmm. would they talk about oh, Valley of the Dinosaurs, it's great. I said, well, wouldn't it be nice, you know? One TV, what do you expect? My, how far we've come, folks. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, it would be really great if uh, HBO Max would put these on the. Uh... Well, they do. HBO Max has a ton of the shorts. The I have not shorts. seen that. I will have they to are there. That out. Uh, I was going to mention that before we before we concluded. A lot of them are there. It's a selection, but you can get a pretty darn good selection of those. Uh, they need there. all of them. Yeah, I know they're probably not going to put the eleven on there. That's but right. But they need to have all of them. That may happen over time because you know the rights are all contained there. It's really easy right. for them to do it. Warner well. owns both, so. so it's it's not it's uh, it's a different. We're the market, folks. <laughs> yeah. Our kids probably aren't. That's one of the reasons. Probably. But you know what? I'd like to have the opportunity. I mean, I Agreed. got my kids to watch this stuff. They loved it. Yeah. Now, you know, because it wasn't always on every Saturday morning, it was hard to keep them interested in it. But, you know, my kids still enjoyed all of it. So it's not like you can't make a show about it. You just have a hard time selling stuff. Yeah. Couldn't, yeah. Have, couldn't have put it better so, myself. So, Francis. What's next, buddy? See, we shared it that time. It's very, it's well done. Very, it's very good. It's very good. Uh New subject, completely new subject. We're going places we've never gone before. We're going history, but we're going, hopping in the Wayback Machine and going way back, way back to 1066. Ah, Nothing important happened then. Oh, yeah. You think the entire Western civilization might not have changed at that moment? It sure as heck did. We're going to talk about the Norman Conquest. You know, we're, uh, hey, uh, the... Uh, the Saxon series by Bernard Cornwell, the Lost Glass Kingdom and all that, the Vikings, that's all pre this, but it leads up to that. Those have been in the ascendancy since those series have been going on. This kind of leads to where... Western 1066, changed. the last time the Brits actually ruled themselves. That's exactly right. They've been French Ooh, ever since then. No, no. Harsh. They're German now. They were French and then they were German. You, but you're correct. Absolutely. Because, you know, the Germans conquered the French, so they naturally they get England. Well, I, I suppose <laughs> that's true. Uh, the Normans themselves, though, actually, they really weren't much French. They were more Viking than anything else. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they were their descendants of the Vikings. Uh, that that had basically taken over the area of Normandy, and they decided, yeah, England lives pretty good, let's go. And history was changed forever since then. We're going to talk about all that next time and all the personalities and how much that changed everything. Don't miss it. Hope you enjoyed another pointless discussion of eternal questions. Remember, new episodes publish every Friday at noon Eastern. Spread the word. We're on all the major podcast platforms. And leave us a comment or review because that helps others find us. 
We're on Instagram, Twitter, as well as our website, snakesandotters.com. I'm Martin. And I'm Robert. And I'm Francis. Join us next week, same snake time, same otter channel.